Ladies and gentlemen, the orange crop estimates for the next year. This clip is from the cult classic After Trading Places from 1983. States, it's a scene showing the U.S. Problem. Department of Agriculture the releasing its monthly crop estimates, harvest. known as the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates. These estimates are produced once a month for the world on a continuous basis. That was in 1983. So, what has happened? Markets wait for this data and for these releases with bated breath. Markets are very volatile because of these data releases. 2018, the 35th anniversary edition of Trading Places came out, but WASD and the USDA actually does the same thing it did in the 1980s today. It releases those estimates once a month, Behind closed doors, there's some negotiation that goes on. Nobody actually understands how these estimates are generated. And it's a manual process. So there's complete lack of transparency in a public good. So now, 2019. Longest government shutdown in history. What happens then? The USDA announces that the January crop report will actually be delayed. Now, January is actually a really critical month for this report because it is the start of the new year, which means that it provides estimates for global supply and demand for 2019, but it also provides the final numbers from 2018 where all these financial contracts are settled upon so that farmers across the U.S. and the rest of the world actually make all sorts of planting decisions and economic decisions based off these payouts. So when a report like this gets delayed, there are significant ramifications for markets and for global food. So when this got announced on January 4, 2019, the original release date was supposed to be January 11. We as a company, Grow Intelligence, decided that we would step in and that we would generate these estimates and that we'd actually generate them using an open platform and com provide complete transparency. In one week, we generated over 1,000 new forecast models. Models were for forecasting supply, demand, and trade for over 35 crops that were grown around the world. Now, in doing this, we did something slightly different than WASDE, actually. We released estimates for 20 crops that are not included in this report. So this report itself is highly limited in the context of what it actually covers in agriculture. Agriculture is 50,000 crops. This covers 15. We were able to do 35 one week's notice. Now, why were we able to do that? On January 11th, we successfully estimated, um, we successfully released these estimates, and we partnered with media organizations to actually provide the releases to the marketplace in place of the US government releases. So at noon EST, we watched a live stream go through on Bloomberg, on Reuters, and essentially trading desks making decisions off a number that had been generated by a private company, but released to the public for free. Now, of course, were our numbers good or bad? We didn't know. And we wouldn't know until February 8th, which is when they were gonna release the next set of numbers. So 24 hours in advance, we released our next set of estimates on February 7th. Now, of the over 1,000 forecast models that we generated, 55 were actually included in the release. And of the 51 out of the 55 um, at released estimates, we were actually able to um, successfully predict the directional revision, meaning was supply going up or down? Was the US sending more or less soybeans to China? What was going on between Brazil and China? What were the implications? How does this nexus work? A 93% hit rate one week. We had no, not much notice, and we're a company of a little over 60 people. So why were we able to do this? We're an AI company that's built on three core principles. It's AI that's built on deep domain expertise. We have people that know agriculture really well. We have plant scientists, we have hydrologists, we have market research analysts. We cover the spectrum of agriculture. This has allowed us to build a lot of depth. 
But thirdly, we have a lot of diversity. As I mentioned, we're a little over 60 people. We have 24 different disciplines in the company. And we come from about 19 different nationalities. That is actually what global food looks like. And the more that you are able to design and build systems that actually reflect the real world, I truly believe the more success that you can actually see in the outcomes of the products that we built. So why did we do this? It's not to replace the US government. But it is in recognition that the US is actually a very dominant player in global agriculture. So this chart shows you the production of the key kind of crops that are consumed around the world, corn, rice, wheat, and soybeans. If you look, the US and China dominate that chart. Now, this is not on a per capita basis. If you look at this on a per capita basis, the US is producing about 1.7 tons per capita of these crops per year, whereas China is only producing 0.4. So this is the trade mismatch, right? So this is not giving you an ac accurate reflection of the actual world. So if what we're trying to understand is global agriculture, we have to respect the fact that it sits in a global world and that the world is actually much bigger than the US. This is a chart that shows you demographic trends around the world. Asia, the blue line, and Africa, the red line that's growing fast, are actually the two dominant regions. These are also regions that happen to not have a USDA, which is an agency that has a $140 billion budget and 100,000 employees. So if we want to understand our global food systems, and we recognize that we cannot have public institutions with such big budgets, how are we gonna leverage tech and AI to actually improve the world? We have to start with an understanding from somewhere, and that benchmark is actually the USDA. And this presented an opportunity for us to say, here's how we fare against the gold standard, but now we can do a lot more. We can do a lot better. We don't have to do this once a month. These are continuous models that update every single day. Imagine a world where we have this continuous understanding. This becomes critical.